Hey everybody, today we're going to take a quick look at The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Directed by Michael Schabs and once again starring Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine Warren. This is based on a true story, and like the previous movies in the Conjuring franchise, that phrase is doing a lot of heavy lifting. The Warrens witness the exorcism of a young boy named David Glatzel, along with his older sister Debbie and her boyfriend Arnie Johnson. The exorcism does not quite go as well as they had hoped, and Arnie actually asks the demon to take him instead which it does. This does not end well for Debbie's employer slash landlord who gets a little drunk one day, yes day, and goes a bit nuts and Arnie ends up killing him. This leads to a historic event that did actually happen where for the first time ever in a murder trial, a defendant pled not guilty by way of demonic possession. I say again, this actually happened. And so the Warrens set out to find proof of this demonic possession and hopefully clear Arnie's name. Good luck with that. As I've mentioned before, I did enjoy the first two Conjuring films. I thought they were very good horror movies with some really creepy elements. Uh, the Crooked Man especially in the second movie. I still remember that very well. And I say this as someone who believes the real-life Ed and Lorraine Warren are completely full of shit. But I can still enjoy these movies as I understand they are not meant to be documentaries. I will point out that the real-life Arnie and Debbie, up until her very recent death, have always asserted the Warrens' recollection of the events this movie is based on were accurate. David Glatzel and his older brother Carl Glatzel Jr. have always asserted the Warrens are full of shit. So take that for what it's worth. But yeah, I enjoyed the first two Conjuring movies. I have not seen most of the spin-offs. I never saw The Nun or The Curse of La Llorona. I only saw the first Annabelle movie and thought it sucked and had no desire to see any more. Although I heard the second one was actually pretty good, so one of these days I need to check that out. And this brings us to the third movie in the main Conjuring series, The Devil Made Me Do It, which is very different from the first two. It still has plenty of scares and some tense and creepy moments, but unlike the first two movies, which were basically haunted house movies, this is more of a detective story. Instead of trying to exorcise a demon from a house, they are trying to track down a witch who is cursing people and forcing this demon upon them. While I did still enjoy the movie overall, and I do think it was a smart idea to try to do something different instead of just doing yet another haunted house movie, this movie kinda shot its load early on. The opening scene is the exorcism of eight-year-old David, and it is done really well. There was a bit in there that was clearly an homage to The Exorcist, which I kinda liked, and overall the scene is just creepy as hell. There is something inherently disturbing about evil children. Because no one is actually born evil. Evil has to be taught, and it takes time to really fester in the heart of a human being. And a child that young has not had time to be taught that, so when they turn evil, it just feels wrong. And the problem with this scene is it is easily the best part of the movie, and nothing for the rest of this movie's runtime even comes close to matching it. There are still some creepy and unsettling moments, like the scene where the demon possessing Arnie finally takes over and has him kill the landlord, and the perspective keeps switching back and forth between what's actually happening, and what Arnie thinks is happening, and what the demon is showing him is happening. Eugenie Bondurant, who plays the occultist responsible for the possession, was very disturbing. I would not want to meet that woman in a dark alley. I don't know if I want to meet her in broad daylight. Wilson and Farmiga are still both really good as the Warrens, and a big part of the conflict between the Warrens and the Occultist is the Occultist gets her strength from hate, whereas the Warrens get their strength from love, and specifically their love for each other, which feels very genuine. This is also true for Sarah Catherine Cook and Rory O'Connell, who play Debbie and Arnie. Love conquering hate is a big theme here, and to the movie's credit, it manages to do this without feeling too cheesy. But where this movie kind of falters is with the story. Uh, I was actually pretty invested in this detective story as it played out, 
But the ending kind of killed it. And I am about to get into spoiler territory, even though this is technically based on real events. So if you don't want to be spoiled, hit the mute button until this goes away. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So throughout the movie, the Warrens are trying to find this witch and put a stop to her. And as they start to get closer to finding her, they become targeted themselves. Ultimately, they do find her. They stop her. The witch gets dragged down to hell and everyone is happy. Oh, except for Arnie, because after all that, he still goes to jail for manslaughter. Which did actually happen in real life. And the events that play out in the movie between the plea and the verdict are pretty much completely made up. The way this court case really worked is the lawyer said, Your Honor, my client pleads not guilty by way of demonic possession. And the judge said, Ha ha ha, no really, how do you plead? And that was basically it. The movie, however, makes it seem like the judge was actually considering this demonic possession defense for a time, which is hilarious. In fact, in the courtroom scene, when the lawyer is entering the plea, you can actually see the exact moment where her dignity just evaporates. And in the end, while the Warrens do manage to save Arnie's life, the fact that one of their major goals was to get him off the hook for the murder, and they completely failed to do that, makes their victory a bit hollow. Overall, I still enjoyed it. It had some good moments and some solid performances, but I do think it is the weakest of the three Conjuring movies. If you have HBO Max, you might as well give it a watch because it won't cost you anything. If you don't and you can see it in the theater safely, I'd say it's worth a matinee. And that's all I have to say about The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Till next time, take care.